Jay Billis joins us now from Greensboro. And for those around the country that might not be aware, Greensboro holds a truly special place in what I believe to be a truly special conference, the ACC, around this time of year. Man, that's a, an incredible place to be, Jay. And as you're there this morning, and it looks like they're getting ready to play these games, and I, I'm sitting there thinking there's no way they're going to play. Dave, stand by. I think there's no game. That's it. We're done. No game. After a recent discussion, the league has made a decision to end this year's Atlantic Coast Conference men's basketball tournament as of today. It, it was an incredible, incredibly surreal moment. It just felt so surreal. We knew it was going to be weird. We knew it was going to be surreal. It was just, it, it was such a surreal time and surreal moment. And it was surreal. It's 100 percent surreal. Frankly, once we started the tournament, I thought we would be able to finish the tournament. Didn't turn out that way. Obviously, we knew going in there was going to be a different wrinkle because we had been talking about this this COVID-19 that was sort of just starting to pop up as we as we were heading into the women's tournament. But we got through the women's tournament. So we lived it and we crowned champion. Sunday during that women's final, I remember I, I sat with, with John Swafford for a second and we were passing a bottle of hand sanitizer between us and it just had that feeling of we were getting used to all these new rituals and we didn't understand then the degree to which things would change, but you had a sense even then that the landscape was changing so fast. Monday before the tournament, we had a lengthy meeting in the Greensboro Coliseum with the uh, local health authorities and governmental authorities and, and uh, the good folks who run the Greensboro Coliseum and, and our staff uh, on a what-if basis. He wanted to hear from us what our plans were going to be, how we were going to address it, and so we're already prepared for what additional increased sanitizing or cleanliness that we would have to showcase to all the fans coming to make sure everyone was comfortable attending the ACC men's tournament. We sort of knew what the drill would be. We just hoped we didn't, wouldn't need to run the drill. Welcome to the Greensboro Coliseum for tonight's ACC tournament. Oh, wow. I've been to every ACC tournament since 1984. And it's my favorite weekend of the year. I mean, it, it, it truly is. It's a annual reunion with friends and fans and you know when you grew up in the state of North Carolina and it was time for the ACC tournament I mean you would go to school and the teachers would roll out the television you know you were hopeful when the ACC tournament started that you were one of the classes uh, where your teacher had gotten a TV you know as a kid growing up on Tobacco Road the ACC tournaments in the DNA uh, it was a state holiday from a personal standpoint having seen it since I was a kid and having been to every tournament uh, since 1972. It's special. Every tournament that I've ever seen had something unique to it. Our community loves the ACC and bleeds that kind of atmosphere uh, and the ACC basketball tournament is just an incredible piece to our history and an important part of the Greensboro Coliseum. When you go into Greensboro, you know that the whole town knows the tournament is there. You know that everybody in town is excited. Everyone wants the weather outside to be great so people can be tailgating. They want everything fantastic. They want the games to go down to the wire. And I just think it's a much more exciting atmosphere in the whole town. The tailgating in between games, unlike any other site you'd ever want to see for a college basketball game, much less tournament, uh, but the Greensboro Coliseum just feels like the perfect pair of jeans, right? The great pair of shoes that always fit. I think it means more to Greensboro than maybe all the other cities combined. You know, we feel like we own it. Going in, 
I think there was a sense that we have to do this better than we've ever done it before. This is our time to shine, and we're going to do it, as we always do. Three, two, one! History is made by Notre Dame! We are underway in the 2020 ACC tournament. Ball deflected, stolen. Panthers with a three on one. Tony off to McGowan. He jams it home, and the Panthers have the lead 68 66. The Pitt Panthers holding off Wake Forest 81 to 72. They snap a seven game losing skid. Freshman Cole Anthony has returned for North Carolina, missed 11 games with a partially torn meniscus. Quickly left side, still outside the arc to Anthony. Whips it to Brooks, who slips a screen and then throws it down. And Carolina needs five of them, and there's one, 78-56. It wasn't going to be business as usual, but that night it felt that way just with, with the games and you're on deadline and what are the next day's matchups? And there was no sense that the event would be canceled. Well, I knew it was a big difference for us because we hadn't played very good. We hadn't had a very good season. So for us, it was a, maybe a last chance. Uh, that made it different right there. It was a basketball night on Tuesday night. Wednesday was a lot different. All right, the national anthem has been sung. The starting lineups have been announced. We've had fist bumps and elbow bumps. Palms are sweaty. We're all set for basketball. Sims into the forecourt. Leaves it a new and driving and dunking left side. And Miami will run out of time. Hurricanes run out of time, and the season comes to an end. Gowan's driving, tried to kick it into the corner to Champagne. Picked off by Daniels, down the floor to Johnson. Lobs for Daniels, jams it into the fast break. There's the horn, and the pack wins another game that was must win. We survived and advanced. Um, you know, in a tournament situation, you don't have but so long to celebrate. We'll celebrate for a couple hours, and then we'll start working on Duke. I think, though, if there was one moment where it really hit home, where you really kind of felt the earth move and the foundation change, it was Wednesday night. Discussion and a delay here in Oklahoma City. Utah is no longer on the floor. The Thunder are no longer on its bench. The officials have gone back to the locker room. The game the tonight has been postponed. You are all safe. Take your time in leaving the arena tonight. The NBA's Rudy Gobert tests positive for the virus. And I think until the NBA player tested positive, I believe on Wednesday night, people generally felt that we were going to be able to play the tournament. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Greensboro Coliseum for tonight's second round ACC tournament game between the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Eagles of Boston College. Gibbs inside Mooney. Mooney lays it up and in. The NBA suspending its season shortly after the Gobert positive was made public. Up racing down the left side of the lane, puts it off the glass and in. There's a basketball game going away, going on, you know, right in front of me, and I'm not even paying any attention to it. So I'm probably, I'm probably writing two different columns already that day, and would it would end up writing four. And it was whiplash inducing. I mean, you're you're looking at the game, and then you look down at your Twitter feed, and something else has happened, and you're trying to process it. And you're trying to write down who just made that basket. I was having uh, frequent calls with the other A5 commissioners. They were going through the same experiences uh, in the same time frame, while at the same time continuing to talk to the governor's office and, and the uh, chief medical officers from the state. So I didn't see a lot of basketball. 
They beat Boston College here tonight, 80-58, to advance to the ACC quarterfinals against second-seeded Virginia tomorrow night. Distracting. I mean, I, I, I don't know how much I thought about Boston College or my team today. I followed the news. Carolina and Syracuse about ready to go at it for the 18th time. It will be the second meeting between these two teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. The interesting thing about when we did realize the world was changing was the night before, sitting in the stands watching Carolina and Syracuse. Bounces to a cutting bay, high left elbow jumper, pure. That's when the news started to come down of uh, reduced fans. Some big news, breaking news here in the ACC tournament due to concerns from the coronavirus. The rest of the tournament will be played without fans. That's to me when it became weird. Left of the lane, spinning to the goal aggressively, floats another one home. There was a lot of discussion about crowds. I knew that maybe there was a chance, but I'm thinking, ah, that's never happened before. It's probably an outside chance at best. And so on Wednesday, I remember my mindset really changed from being in denial to, okay, Vanessa, it's time to wrap your head around this and let's, let's figure this out. You kind of knew, hey, you know, there's something going on here that is obviously very serious. Um, but that night, I still felt like we were probably going to play. Orange fans here at the Greensboro Coliseum rise as the Orange have dispatched Carolina, ending the Tar Heel season. It's difficult to know what the right thing to do is, but um, I think that my hope was that we could play the games. I mean, this could have been our last game, but my hope would be for the players to get to play the games that they've worked so hard to get to where they are. putting my coat and tie on ready to come over to the Greensboro Coliseum, I thought there's a likelihood that we don't have to go over there at all. And the first thing I did was I went over, you know, like 8.30 in the morning to arrive and I went on the set of Packer and Durham on the ACC network. Do you think we'll have basketball today? No, I don't. Um, reasonable minds can differ on this. Uh, this is not anything that requires any sort of panic. Everybody's saying, you know, we're, we're going to try to play. That's that's the plan. And Commissioner Swafford went on the network at 9.30. It's 9.34 a.m. Eastern time. Are we going to have basketball today in Greensboro? Yes, we are. When you're going through it, you're, you you can't be reflective too much because you're, you, there's too much to do and too many... Uh, uh, too much input that you need into the into the decision because that, that was not one that was going to be made unilaterally. There are an awful lot of smart people around and uh, I think as a leader uh, you're not doing your job if you don't take advantage of, of the, the very smart people and experienced people that you have around you. So it, it changed a great deal for us uh, between 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning and noon. He wanted to hear from us what our plans were going to be, how we were going to address it. We were also following both the CDC, the state of North Carolina, and our own Guilford County uh, emergency management guidelines. Sorry to keep you waiting, but uh, I was on a call with my A5 commissioner colleagues, as I have been a lot recently, with a situation that is as fluid as this one seems to be. We've had to make adjustments. Hopefully we won't have to make another adjustment during the next few days, but if it is deemed appropriate to do so and necessary to do so, uh, we would do so. That's the type of fluid situation that we're in. At the time, you didn't know if we were making the right decisions or not. It was, the information was coming so fast but man, things were moving quick and everybody is having to manage their own campus and then you've got the tournament and then you've got other spring sports and you've got winter sports and NCAA. There's no sense in sometimes making a decision too soon. Waiting, gathering, and not rushing to something is okay. And I think 
you know, um, the commissioner and everybody wanted to play, but then the more information they gathered, they waited, they made plans to play, and then it's like, no, we can't do this. The amount of items that you had to deal with was pretty significant, to say the least. The commissioner in our conversation said things have been at times week to week, then day to day, and hour to hour. Mm -hmm. And I think, if I recall correctly, didn't he say there was one more, we're going to have one more call this morning? He did. Right. That one more call this morning was it. Was it. That was it. It was definitely weird and a little different. Uh, it was just kind of awkward because it's kind of quiet. You really like, you can hear everything that's going on. Uh, I mean, you can hear the players on the court talking. You can hear the fans. When they were when they were canceling their tournaments, I think the Big Ten was first. I was like, uh, you know, we gotta prepare the same way. We gotta prepare like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna go out there to play. We're gonna prepare as if. Our, our tournament is not being canceled. The thing I remember most, I think, was certainly uh, when the team, Florida State and Clemson, came off the court and went back into their dressing rooms. And uh, I, I got the two coaches and athletic directors together. I go in and meet with our team, and I'm kind of going through our first round of, of uh, you know, thoughts about the game. And as I do that, Dan Radakovich comes in and kind of comes up and taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, I need you for a minute. Coach Brownell was addressing the players um, and he knew that there was probably something really different because I just walked in. I, I, I rarely do that, you know, when coaches are doing their work. We started that conversation when it was a scout report game, uh, preparation of last minute details and the door opened and the athletic director uh, motioned for me to come out of the room. So at that point, uh, I felt that something was up. I got the two coaches and athletic directors together uh, in, in one of the coaches' dressing rooms uh, in, in the back hall. And I just told them, you know, look, I'm as sorry as I can be, but we've made a decision to uh, to cancel the rest of the tournament. My mind started racing on how am I going to deal with this with our players. You will never catch Coach Leonard Hamilton not prepared for a certain scenario. Jay Leonard Hamilton is the best CEO in the business. He, he's the best and it starts from the top. Even before we arrived in Greensboro, he had hinted to me that in the back of his mind, he was anticipating changes. He wanted to be prepared in case that moment came about. We are back on SportsCenter with breaking news. The ACC announcing just minutes ago they too have canceled their conference tournament. So within the last hour or so, we have had the ACC, the Big 12, SEC, Big 10, and AAC all announced that they would be canceling their conference tournaments. So once we went back to the locker room, I mean, it was kind of the same thing. It was the same face, the same concerned that he always talks to us with and that's how we knew it was kind of serious but at the same time we knew kind of that everything was going to be okay just because Coach Ham has always been that way with us. And we talked about life's challenges and we talked about the different challenges that life would give you that you have to try to find a way to overcome. And I felt uh, that once we had a conversation that they understood this was the best approach. And I said, I'd like for you to come back out on the floor. We hadn't announced this publicly. Uh, and Leonard, I'd like to give you and your team uh, the ACC championship trophy. You, you deserve it. And I looked at Brad and I said, Brad, you, your team doesn't have to come out on the floor. And he said, Commissioner, we want to be out there for Florida State. We should be out there for Florida State and for this league, which I thought was really classy. We respect what they've done, the accomplishment those kids have achieved. It's really hard to win an ACC regular season championship, and the right thing to do is for my guys who are here in the building to be there and support those guys while they're being honored. We all were disappointed we didn't get to play, but um, you know, we just you, you're supposed to do what's right. Coach Brunell, he prides himself on, on running a first class program and, and always being a class act. So um, him bringing us out there on the court to congratulate those guys after the game. 
Uh, it really, it really shows uh, his character. I'm told that in Greensboro that they're bringing Florida State out to uh, present the championship to them as a the regular season champions. Let's go to Greensboro now. After a recent discussion of about 15 minutes ago with our presidents and athletics directors again, the league has made a decision to end this year's Atlantic Coast Conference men's basketball tournament as of today. You could tell that, that this was weighing on him. And when he, he I thought he was really emotional um, when he was giving the speech to end the tournament. He never lost it, not, not that kind of emotion, but just sort of, uh, this was a big deal. And, and it is not what, it is not what people are in this business to do. You know, I'd be less than honest with you than if I didn't say it. that was emotional uh, for, for a number of reasons. No, number one was looking at those players because I know how much uh, it meant to them to play this tournament. Disappointment was just tremendous. One of those moments where it's like, this is why he's the commissioner. This is why he's been the longest tenured commissioner of this league. And it, it, it was, quite frankly, what he does best, which is speak from the heart. Standing out there, and I didn't know exactly what I was going to say. You know, it wasn't until afterwards that I was sure what I really did say. I, uh, uh, somebody gave me a transcript of it, and I, I said, read it. So it was, it was, it was challenging emotionally, but, uh, you know, hopefully the right words were, were said and as best they could be at that point in time. Well, there's no doubt that uh, Coach Swafford, uh, has always demonstrated that he's a stand-up guy. I don't think we can have more, better leadership than what uh, John has demonstrated over the year. The most important thing was doing what was right for the, for the, for the athletes. This says a lot about him. We believe that it's the right decision to make at this particular point in time. You can ask, why was it not made sooner? It's a fair question. The answer is that it's an extraordinarily fluid situation with information coming to us that changes. I used to say by, by the week, then I said by the day, and now I say by the hour. So thank you for your understanding. Florida State University has had an absolutely tremendous basketball season to this point. If there is an NCAA tournament, and we hope there will be, the Florida State Seminoles will be the Atlantic Coast Conference AQ. And will represent this great conference in every conceivable positive way because of the leadership at the end of that bench, Leonard Hamilton. This year's ACC Coach of the Year for the third time. That was significant for us today to be the regular season champions. Our guys have worked hard for that. And that's allowing us to carve out this little niche for ourselves that we have belonged to an establishment of some of the best of the best. Hall of Fame coaches, Final Fours, NCAA tournaments. I mean, there's a whole, a whole list of them. So th this moment is important. The Florida State Seminoles, Atlantic Coast Conference Men's Basketball Champions 2020 for the Atlantic Coast Conference. Congratulations. And just from the time I got here till now, um, I mean, this has always been I mean, the, the dream for us is to win the ACC regular season, to win the ACC title. Probably more happy for Coach Ham than anything. So. That would probably be the biggest thing, just to see the excitement he had from when we won the ACC regular season and just the mindset he was having kind of after that. I mean, that's definitely something I remember forever. We will never, ever have another ACC tournament like that. I, I don't care who wins, the, I don't care who makes the great shot and the great play, the great coaching move, uh, the, the incredible teams. Uh, we will always remember uh, as ACC fans, where you were in March in Greensboro when John Swafford said, hey, guess what, folks, I hate to tell you, but we're going to have to shut this thing down. It, it, 
there will never ever be another ACC tournament moment quite like that. As hard as it was, I think, it, I think in hindsight, it was the right decision given the circumstances. I don't think there's anything really that we would have done differently five or 10 years from now when I look back, this will probably be one I would, I would uh, uh, you'd have to put in way up toward the top uh, for all the wrong reasons. Uh, because it's the most unique tournament ever because it wasn't completed. And, uh, that's never happened but once.